Hey guys, this is Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In this video, we'll be doing a quick algebra review for chemistry. So if you're taking this class and you're feeling a little shaky or not so sure about algebra, then this is the video for you. Here I have four chemistry equations and we're just gonna go through each of these solving for a particular variable and that, that will allow us to re some, review some algebra concepts. This first equation, K equals change of degree Celsius plus 273, we're solving for degree Celsius. So to do that, we have to isolate, isolate this variable. And to, to isolate this variable, to get this variable by itself, we have to get rid of the 273. We have to get rid of its neighbors. So to get rid of something in algebra, you have to do the opposite of, of the operation. Currently, you see that the degree Celsius is being added to 273. So to get rid of 273, what you're going to do is you have to subtract 203, 273 from both sides, and then that will cancel this out. So now you're left with Kelvin minus 273 equals degrees Celsius, and that's what degrees Celsius equals. Next equation, we have PV equals NRT, which is the ideal gas law, something you'll see a lot in the gas section. The first, in the first problem, we have to solve for P. So we have to isolate this P right here. And to isolate the P, we have to get rid of the neighbor V. Um, and you can see that P currently is being multiplied by V. So to get rid of the V, we have to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we're going to divide both sides by V, and then that will get rid of the V, leaving also PV, or P equals NRT divided by V. In the next one, we have to solve for N. So let's, let me copy this over and start from scratch. We're solving for n, that means we have to get n by itself. And so we have to get rid of the two neighbors, r and t. Currently, n is multiply, being multiplied by r and t. When you have numbers, when you have letters next to each other and there doesn't look like to be any, any operation, it, they're actually being multiplied. So to get rid of the r and t, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to divide both sides by r and t. Because division is the op opposite of multiplication. So then when we do that, the RTs cancel out on the right side. So we get PV divided by RT on the left side, and that equals N. So we have successfully isolated N. Next one, we have an example of th this equation is Charles' law, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. First, we have to solve for V1, which is this variable. So we have to isolate that. And to isolate that, we have to get rid of the the things around it. So we have to get rid of T1. Um, to, to get rid of T1, we do the opposite of the operation that it's, T1's currently involved with right now, which is division. So to get rid of division, we have to do the opposite, which is multiplication. We're going to multiply both sides by T1. And then this T1 and this T1 cancels out. So we're left with V1 equals V2 over T2 times T1. So we can just put the T1 on top. Uh, because when you're timing T1, you're actually timing by T1 over 1. So it's going to be V2, T1 on top, and there's T2 on the bottom. Now for the second part, we have to solve for T2. Let me just start by rewriting out the equation. So here we're solving for T2, which is currently on the bottom in the denominator. Um, you always have to bring the thing that you're solving for up to the top. It can't be, it can't stay in the denominator. It has to be on the top of the fraction instead of the bottom of the fraction. So whenever you ha you're solving for something that's on the bottom of the fraction, the very first step is to cross multiply. So we're going to bring these two together and then set it equal to these two for step one. So that'll give us V1 times T2 equals v2 times t1 and in the order it doesn't matter you can write t1 or t2 v1 uh, or you can write t1 v, v2 the order doesn't matter but when whenever you're solving for a variable that's on the bottom of the fraction the first step is just to cross multiply bring these two together and these together now we're going to isolate the, the t2 by getting rid of the v1 and T2 and V1, they're currently being multiplied by each other. So to get rid of the, the V1, we're just going to divide both sides by the V1. And so then the V1 cancels out. And now we have T2 equals V2 times T1 divided by V1. So the, the new thing that we learned in this problem is this. If the variable you're solving for is on the bottom of the fraction, the first step is to cross multiply. So then you can bring the variable to the top. 
Okay, and then the next one we have the equation for the root mean square velocity v equals square root of 3rt divided by m. So the first problem we're going to be solving for, let's copy this over first. First problem we're going to be solving for t, which is this variable right here. So we first have to get rid of the square root. And the way we get rid of the square root is we're going to take the square, we're going to square both sides. So we're going to square the left side and the right side. And when we square the, the left side, we get v2, v squared. And then when we square the right side, the squared and the, the square root cancels each other out. So essentially, you're, you're just getting rid of this part, and you're left with what's in the middle, 3RT over M. And then now we have to solve for T, which is this variable right here. So let's start by getting rid of the, uh, the M. Here's another shortcut that you can use. If you have something on the bottom that you want to get rid of, what you can do is you can just bring it to the top of the other side. So let's just start with that, and then that'll give us v squared equals 3rt, and then now the m is going to be on top right here. Because that's the same thing as saying multiply both sides by m. So now you have m multiplied by, by v squared. And then we want to get rid, next we want to get rid of the 3 times r, because we, we want to just isolate the t. So here we can also use the shortcut. If there's something on top that you want to get rid of, what you can do is you can multiply I mean, you can move it over to the bottom the denominator of the other side. So doing that, we get m times v squared divided by 3r equals t. And we have successfully solved for t. So the new thing I've shown you here is that if you don't want to think about multiplication and division, if you want to, to get rid of, of something that's on the bottom, just move it to the top of the other side. And to get rid of something that's on the top, move it to the bottom of the fraction of the other side. OK, let's try this for the next one. OK, in the next problem, we have to solve for m. So to do that, again, we have to get rid of square root first. So we take the square of both sides, giving us, we'll square this side and square this side. So that gives us v squared equals 3rt over m. And again, now we, we have a variable that's on the bottoms. So what we can do is we can cross multiply, cross multiply these two, or essentially we can just bring the m over to the top of the other side. And then that gives us m v squared equals 3rt. Then we have to get rid of the v squared. And so we can just divide both sides by v squared. And then that will cancel out the v squared. So that leaves us with m equals 3rt over v squared. All right, let's take a look at one final one. In this last one, we have the equation delta g standard equals negative rt ln k, and we're going to be solving for k here. So the first thing that we, we should do is get rid of the negative rt, and you can see that the ln of k is being multiplied by the negative rt. So to get rid of that, we do the opposite. We're going to divide both sides by negative rt, and that will get rid of the negative rt. And on the left side, we have delta g standard e divided by negative rt equals natural log of n. And to get rid of natural log, we just take we take e to the power of both sides. So we're going to take raise the left side to the power of e, and we're going to raise the right side to the power of e, because e cancels out ln. Then these two are going to cancel out, and then we'll be left with e raised to the power of delta g standard divided by negative rt equals k. So if you need to get rid of ln, just take uh, to e raised to the power of both sides. And there you have just a basic algebra review of chemistry. I know that was probably a lot in a short period of time. If you want to review, just rewatch the video and just uh, really think about to to cancel out something. You just have to do the opposite. If you're so, if you want to cancel something that's being multiplied, then divide. If you want to cancel something that's being added, then subtract. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry. If you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.